Uh, Jan's just about to put a bit more lippy on. I don't know if you heard that. Uh, that sound at the front, at the top, that's very familiar. We were trying to work it out. Sounded like my bassoon is what we decided. Uh, right, this is a masterclass. I think it's going to be a lot of fun as well. Masterclass is that one opportunity where we really take the time to uh, go into depth with some amazing uh, projects for you and some amazing techniques. And this one is all going to be uh, looking at stenciling and all the different ways in which you can use those and some of the different projects you are going to be able to incorporate with them as well. Now, I am not on my own. The lovely Jan is here. How are you, Jan? How was I'm your first all right. I've got my the... lippy sorted out <laughs> now, Joe. We're How good. Was your... <laughs> How was your first outing to the pub since I saw you? <laughs> oh, my goodness. It was a bit scary, Joe, honestly. I'll tell you about it later. Fabulous. Yes, we're back. We're back with some more cosmic shimmer goodies today. So I've just got one or two bits and pieces. We've got those gorgeous shimmer paints going on. Nice. So we're going to be using that in the first demo. Texture paste. Back to the good old gesso. I've got my art journal with me again. So, yeah, lots of those messy techniques again. The only thing I've forgotten is I forgot my apron. Joe, oh, no. so yeah, no, there's no telling what could happen today. Yes, I normally put my apron on when I mix media in. But, well, I'm uh, sure you'll end up with a very colourful blouse by the end of this <laughs> show. It will be, uh, yeah, it will be like some sort of, of installation, I reckon, yes. by the end uh, of the show. Lots of you get in touch. The uh, masterclass is the perfect opportunity, really, for you to get in touch with us. Field any questions that you might have for Jan. Maybe you want to share with us some of the projects that you've made with any of your mixed media products or any of your stenciling products. I would love to see them. You can drop them to me studio at crafterscompanion.co.uk if you want to get in touch with me then of course you can do that in all the usual ways crafters tv if you're on facebook crafters companion if you are across on youtube as well uh, make sure you're subscribing if you are over there lots of you tuning in saying hi from all over today we're going to kick things off with a couple of different collections for you uh, so we're going to start off with we're going to start off with the five by nine stencils that we've got on the show for you. Now, these are brilliant. These did come along with the word dies. However, um, they can be used in a whole manner of different ways. Let me take you through what you're getting in here. So you've got the heart stencil first. This one here is your leaves. Then you've also got your circles. That there is your rickrack. And you've got your stars and spots in here as well. Uh, you've got 10% saving on these, 21 pounds and change, $28 and change if you are a platinum member. Now, something else that's been put together uh, for this show are the large stencils. These are brilliant. If you like to do larger scrapbook pages, something like a 12 by 12, they're 11.75 by 11.75. We did launch them with a the Pro, and if you want to emboss with them, you'll need the Pro, but you can use these as large stencils in their own right. They are fantastic for that. So you've got your falling hearts. This one here is your wood grain. This one here I love, it's a bit Dali-esque. It's a sketched squirrels. Swirls. I'll fix that in a moment, don't you worry about that. Uh, this one is your dots and spots. You also have natural stone, deco tiles. Uh, you've got your Moroccan tile, which I absolutely adore. Uh, and finally, you've got the Chesterfield leather in there too. 47.94 or 59.70 uh, if you want to go for those. Any two of those, £14 or $17. The other thing to note as well, if you are a platinum member, you're spending over £15, dollars or euros, today, while stocks last, you will get a free gift automatically added to your basket. And it's a wonderful uh, creative scene die. You don't need to do anything whatsoever. It will just be all added into there for you at the checkout, which is absolutely amazing. Keep get your messages in any questions you've got get them into us and remember to send those pictures in for us too but i know jan you've got loads that you want to get through haven't you over the next couple of hours i have yeah lots of different techniques again today i have sort of prepared full demos to get a finished project but i want to show you those techniques again and i know from um, lots of people that have contacted me after the mixed media shows i know that you're really enjoying trying out these i've had one or two people send photographs of things that they've done uh, dipping the toe into mixed media and again it's not as scary as people think. It's quite a, a known tradition. You mentioned mixed media and people panic. They think, oh, I can't do that. I can't do that. Think of those big canvases with all those lovely bits and pieces on. That's great. But literally, I'm going to bring it back to basics for you again. It's like mixed awesome. media is simply mixing your mediums. You're doing it without even knowing. Those of you that love your gilding wax, 
mixing your medias you're already started those of you that, look, that like using a little bit of uh, texture paste and things like that glitters you know the minute that you start adding ribbon to your cards and things like that you might not think of it as traditional mixed media but that is what it's all about it's literally about adding things to your card stock that's a different medium Perfect. and that's what we're going to do today i've got some goodies on the show for you again I've got some beautiful shimmer paints that we're going to use in this first demo now the only thing that i realize having arrived here this morning that craig and I chose the same stencil so I think maybe I need to liaise with our Craig a bit better because I think he demoed this morning using the dots and spots we did uh, as and well. that's the one that I'd chosen at home without even speaking to him so may maybe we need to get our heads you together and, I've also uh, got some news for you as well have you yeah I've got news for you Jan now we have offered you uh, uh sorry I'm just here just getting some macarons uh, <laughs> macarons uh we did happen in the earlier show that was my suggestion but uh, along with the viewers, but you do have the power of the veto. You're like a founding nation within the EU almost. So oh. he did a demonstration in the earlier show. It was so good. We said he could put it into the card of the show. So now I understand that that means that Jan, that you're not guaranteed now to have card of the day, but it was so good. We said he could put it in, but we did say you would have the power of veto. Now, so you're you... going to let him have it in or you're going to veto it? No, you know how I feel about this, Joe. It's like, I am quite happy for anybody to have a go. I so know. keep it in there. Uh, uh... It doesn't bother me in the slightest. It's all <laughs> a bit of fun. If you know, I've got two chances against one. So the, the odds are in my favor, but it doesn't bother me. You know, awesome. so I was watching okay. our Sarah yesterday and she was all geared up because because she'd won again and uh, I just think let everybody have right. a go I am quite happy for it to stay there on that shelf okay brilliant Good. yep I just thought I'd give you the power no problem you know, the power's in your hands Jan I'm off right so we're going to take our dots and spots then and what I love about these is you've got that size if you need it now last time I was here I showed you this particular stencil and we actually used some of the texture paste onto a piece of 12 by 12 design paper I then used part of those of you that have been following me I actually used part of that design paper then in our craft along when we did the um the abstract uh create a card dies so it just shows you know that you can add accents to something that you think is already done so like uh, any papers out of your books pop the stencils over the top and you can add a little you know just a little bit in a corner here and there it doesn't have to be the whole thing and it just takes those papers to the next level you get that reaction from people in that oh what's that I've not seen that before they want to touch it and have a feel so again even though I've got a big stencil today I'm only going to use it on a smaller piece of card Okay. And I'm actually going to create my own background. We're going to make a box at the end of the Ooh, demo. Nice. But I'm just going to use this rather than p taking a piece of paper out of a paper pad and matting and layer it on top of the box. I'm actually going to use the stencil to create the detail that I want to decorate the box with. So we're going to pop this down onto our uh, mat and I'm going to pop the stencil over the top. Now, if you're not overly confident with stencils, then I would recommend our stick and spray all right which is a temporary adhesive and you can spray this all over the back of your stencils and what it means is that you'll actually get it to adhere to your project that you're working on and you know then that it's not going to move about now I've been doing this quite a long time and I must admit I'm lazy I tend not to bother I just sort of go for it and see what happens but it's there if you need it stick and spray okay, make sure it's the repositional one if you use the permanent one we're going to struggle to get the stencil back off your cardstock so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take... That still be mixed media though. But then... <laughs> Just leave the stencil on, that's still mixed media. Why there not? you are. <laughs> Why not? And then I'm going to use some of this gorgeous shimmer paint. This is absolutely beautiful. Another Cosmic Shimmer product. We brought this to you a couple of shows ago, I think, but we've got them on the show again today. And this one's called Sky. And it's a beautiful, beautiful shade of blue. Water-based paint again. That's what I love about these products. Once you've got that water-based... What's the difference in jam between a paint and a paste? A paint and a paste. The paste has got structure. Okay. Good question, Joe. Yeah. So the paint is literally just a paint that you can use to cover something. We're going to dab it through the stencil. The texture paste has actually got some substance to it okay. in that it will dry raised. So right, it doesn't brilliant. flatten out. So a slight difference there. So uh, we're going to start off with the paint. I'm going to use the paste later on in the show. So all I'm going to do with this is I'm going to take one of my sponge applicators. We've got these on the show for you. Come in hand for all sorts now then let me put that at that side so that you can see and I'm just going to put a little bit of paint onto my 
craft mat. Now this could be your uh, brown craft mat, it could be uh, a glass, t a ceramic tile, could be a piece of acetate, anything you want to work on if you've not got the craft mat. It doesn't need an awful lot then? It doesn't need a lot. If you think you're on it, you know, we're only going to pounce it through the detail on the stencil, so we're not wanting a whole coverage. And then I've literally just taken my applicator with one of the sponge uh, pieces on and I'm literally going to pick up you can see where I've uh, I've been playing at home with it just literally pick up the paint like you would do an ink load up your applicator I'm going to hold this in place and then literally just pounce so I'm just pushing that sponge through the stencil there and build it up it'll start out a little bit lighter the more that you add to it you're going to get that depth of colour in there. So if we just go the whole way across the, uh, the stencil, you can actually take it round in circles, but that does tend to move your stencil a little bit. I like that pouncing action. So literally just fill them in. And as I say, the more you go over it, the more depth. And the beauty of this paint is it dries with a gorgeous shimmer to it like a luster nice. to it so rather than the chalk paints that you've seen me use quite a lot that i've got that sort of lovely chalky finish this is exactly the opposite where you've got um, a little bit of shimmer going can on. we use this for like full coverage if we wanted to completely yes. color a piece of card absolutely stuff? yeah so what i would do if i was coloring a piece of card is i'd put one coat on quite thin and then I'd, I'd, I'd either wait for it to dry or just dry it with your heat tool. Right. And then I'd put a second coat on. An actual I'm, heat tool or like pretend one that you usually have? I've got my pretend one with me <laughs> again. Yeah. I've got it with you today. I've got it, it with me still today, Joe. Simple pleasures, <laughs> isn't it, Jan? Simple pleasures. <laughs> you know, every time I turn it on at home now, it makes me chuckle. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I've got it with me just to dry. It's, it's handy for just drying things off. I'm not very patient when I'm waiting for things no, to dry. I'm not very it is, I would always that. recommend actually air drying things okay. normally. Uh, but again, it doesn't matter if you have to sort of give it a helping hand along the way. So you can see that's just gone through the whole stencil there. I've not used a massive amount of paint. Awesome. Okay. So literally, just make sure you've got a little bit in all the uh, the pieces there. Don't be too fussy, Jan. And then when we lift this off, we can see that we've got that gorgeous oh, design lovely. underneath that. there. And I'm I mean, just going to see, it is still a little bit damp. I don't know whether the, oh, you can, yeah, it is actually, I was just going to say, see if the camera can pick up, yeah, but you can you just can see, see where shine. it's catching. The light, it's got that lovely sort of luster to it as well. So a little bit different than the chalk paint. Just it gives you that opposite. Kind of, it doesn't have any sort of fleck in it though, does it, Jan? No, it's just no, overall, it's just it's a plain a paint. Medium. Yeah. And then as far as your stencil goes, I'm just going to grab um, a spare piece of cardstock. And what I like to do, again, if you've not seen me do this before, I'm just going to grab um, a wet wipe. And because this is all water-based, it's literally just going to come off. So just rubbing it through that stencil onto a piece of scrap card you're going to get sort of a free go a free background which we all like free okay. go okay so it's a way of cleaning your stencil without wasting too much of your product and you're going to get sort of a freebie in the process that you can then use to work on so again just to give that a dry off because if you let the product build up on your stencils it can affect how effective they are okay, but you're actually going nice. to get a second go now this won't be quite as shimmery as the uh, the full one but i pop this to one side then in a box so that i've literally got those backgrounds to work on when i need them same with anything that you've gathered on your mat or anything like that it will all just wipe off because it's water-based so literally clean everything up and then what we're going to do is we're going to use this to actually make the top sections to decorate the box with. So I'm going to bring in some bits and pieces that I'd started at home. And I just want to show you, I've left this to finish off because normally I say, oh, here's the base that I've already done because you don't need to see me put a box together. But I'm actually going to reinforce this one. This is our textured cardstock from the big 12 by 12 pads. Now, it's, it's a beautiful weight for working with for matting and layering, okay. but it's not as strong. This is actually the stamping card. So normally I would be making boxes out of something that's about 300 GSM. So in order to rectify that, I'm going to actually strengthen the sides of it.
So normally you would see my box making, if I bring in the one that I've done for the lid, you will see that it's just got one set of pieces around the edges. Yeah, oh, is that why this is a different shape, this one? Yes. So what I've done here is I've extended it. So my piece started out with all the corners in and I've literally got, as if I've got two edges. Oh. So these measure the same. I've got I've one and a quarter before, inch and one and a quarter inch. And I've left this one specifically just to show you how to make those tabs. So literally, I've come all the way around with these and it's simply going to be a case of cutting up straight up both of these to that second score line to release this one. And then I'm going to cut parallel to it up that next score line to the second one. Now, I actually cut away the score line. So this score line is on the tab. So I haven't got it here. And this score line is actually on the pit that I'm going to cut away. Right. So on this side, I'm just going to take a little tiny wedge out of there and that piece is waste. Just nip it up to the top there. So that bit's waste. And then I'm going to take the last square off here and that bit's waste. So you can see now how we're getting those tabs coming along. And then I'm literally, just like we normally do when we're making boxes, I tend to just take a, a wedge off that side, wedge off that side. That's going to be my glue tab. And then this one, a little tiny wedge off here. So now we've actually got sort of pieces that are extended. So these are going to become the sides and they're going to be double thickness nice. to reinforce it, to give it a little bit more structure. And then I've also chosen a piece of paper to go inside the base. It's decorative, but again, it's also strengthening. I've used my um, Kalal glue to stick it in. And when that dries, you get a really good, nice sort of strong bond there. So it's actually strengthening the base. So I've prepped some of it already and I've got tape. I just need a little bit of tape on that last tab that we've created Does there. It, is it difficult to join two pieces, to stick two pieces of cardstock together and then score them for a box, Jan? Is that why, is, is it easier to do something like this and re, just reinforce the sides? Say that again. Is it difficult if you had two pieces, so the texture cardstock you take done, if you stuck two bits together, first and then oh, I'm with them. you. You mean to, Could, to on yeah. top of each other? Can you other? do that or is that difficult? I'm guessing as you fold it, I guess it would move, wouldn't it? Slightly? A little bit, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's not something that I would normally choose, Joe. Uh, you could do that on the bottom. You could okay. stick another piece on the bottom right. or again, another piece of the textured card inside to strengthen it. But this way, you're actually going to get double thickness on all the sides. Brilliant. So literally, all we're going to do now is like we would normally do, I'm going to take the tape off the tabs and these are going to tuck nicely so it gives you a nice finish as well because these are tucked inside so just take those off and then like we would do normally we're going to fasten this one to that first layer just as if you were making an ordinary box and this is what we'd normally do we'd normally whip round all four corners line them up stick them together because to be fair, most packaging, when you buy packaging, is made like this, isn't it? With yes. the bottom, with the, with the side bits doubled up and, and clipped in at the base. Yeah. Just as I say, it's, it makes it finish, uh, the finish on it a bit nicer mm. as well. So you can see now I've got that extra layer on each one. And all we're going to do with these now is fold them inside. And that then, actually, where I've got my tabs, this is going to cover... Nice. And you've got that really nice finish inside. So again, I've just put some tape on here ready. If you prefer to use wet glue, absolutely fine. I would go with my Kalal again because it's giving that strength. Do you use something to hold it in place if you're doing like wet uh, glue? You could do. You could pop little clips on it or pegs or paper clips, anything like that. But I just the red line tape for me is always a winner because you've got as soon as it's done there, it's it's finished. It's stuck down and you're sorted. Um, I do often use wet glue, but I must admit, when I'm making boxes now, I nearly always go for my red line tape. So just popping all of those now, you've literally got double thickness now on the side. So you've got something that's actually quite sturdy. And all the inside is finished nicely because you can't see any of those glue tabs in there. So literally, all I'm going to do now is just reinforce those fold lines across the top 
just to make sure it's nice and crisp. I actually like the fact that you've got no raw edge as well, Jan. Yeah. Really nice. Yeah, this top edge is a fold. Mm. And I mean, it's scored beautifully and folded. You know, there's no cracking along the top of it there. And then the top piece, I haven't done the double. I've just got a single piece on here because this is our stamping card. It's a good weight and it is just the lid. So literally, I've actually got this just as a single piece. Now, my piece that I had here, I've literally chopped down so I've chopped a piece that's going to fit the lid and then I've literally taken what was left and just chopped it into sort of, I think they're about three quarters of an inch, the strips, right. just literally taken the rest of it out so that I've ended up with a piece for the lid and then I'm going to use the same spots around the outside and literally just done this in case the other one wasn't dry. I've also taken what was left on my... Uh, applicator here and just like you would do with an ink I've just gone round the outsides of these pieces just to highlight them with the blue nice. and it brings it all together so literally let's just pop these down and I'll use my tape pen oh she says I'll use my do you know sometimes I surprise myself look <laughs> I yeah uh, I've got tape on here at the so ready well organized Jan do you know I, sometimes I, I forget that I've actually done it all uh, I would normally have just got my, grabbed my tape pen. So I was obviously in a very uh, organised mood when I was prepping. So just to take that off there, we're going to put the... Uh, let's just move those out It's of amazing way. as well how you don't really need to do too much to something when you've got a stencil like this with that amount of detail in there. You know, I mean, that's... It's a very simple step. I mean, I'm not sure what you've got planned for this, but even if, that, if, that's the, if that's your finished box, that's enough, isn't it? It is, and yeah. And as I say, you don't have to actually make, you know, using sort of all your papers out of your pads or anything. I know we're all a bit precious about how much uh, paper we use and we all like to keep it just, you know, for a rainy day. Um, but sometimes I just fancy a change and I think, oh, I don't want to design paper on there today. I just want something a bit different. It may be a theme that you're working to. You know, it could be that it's, um, it's a gift for a party that's got a theme so you can actually personalize things this way do you know i'm having issues with my tape now it was first of all it was the actual foam pads now the tape's playing up so again these are just measured that quarter of an inch smaller and i'm just going to pop those along all four sides bearing in mind oh, oh here we go look I'm once that paint set then jan do we need to be worried about that moving around or is that no. quite that's in the fibers of the card is yeah it, even the one that i've just done is actually dry now it doesn't right. take long to dry because we've not put a massive amount on if you were actually coating uh, a full piece so for example if you wanted to cover some cardstock or if you wanted to put it onto mdf or something like that it may take a little bit longer to dry because you'd have more paint on there but in this instance because it was just a little bit through the stencil it does and obviously we've got the lights in the studio which help things along the way so it may take a little bit longer at home but in general it does dry pretty quickly but I just wanted to show you you know that even though people think of stenciling and you think of backgrounds and things like that I just wanted to show you you know that you can use it to make your own sort of um, toppers and things like that awesome. so again we just get the tape which I'm I'd have been better off with my tape pen look it just waits while I get on air and then it decides it's not going to play That's there we ways, go look last one so then we've got everything matching and then I've literally I've put a piece of ribbon across mainly I had a little bit of a smudge in my uh, stencil and it was bugging me so I thought right we'll put the, uh, the piece across there and I'm literally going to pop um, a little sentiment on the front there. I've been daring with the foam pads again. Look. You really are pushing the foam pad hey, boundaries. I'm, getting, moment, to, I'm getting, getting the hang of it so we're going to put that one at a little angle just there. I've got a little bow that I'm going to pop on at the end, but just to finish that one. And every time I do this now, after I add my hiccup with the inverted box, every time I do one of these on the air hiccup. now, I keep thinking, do you not, did, you, did you not see my inverted box? Oh. I can't remember what I demoed. I demoed something and I'd put all the box together and everything. And I come to put the lid oh, on the box yes. and it was actually the wrong way around. And the lid fit inside the box. We were in hysterics. <laughs> and I think it was Ben decided it was deliberate. It was an inverted yeah, box. Yeah, an Australian box. Yeah. So every time I do it now, I think, have I done it the right way around we'll soon find out won't we there we go look perfect and then i've just got my uh, hot glue gun on there 
Just pop a little bit of hot glue on the bow. as well, you see a lot of this sort of style, Jan, at the moment. It's quite popular, isn't it? Uh, you know, cards that are a bit less is more, or, you know, I just think that is really, really stunning. Just something a bit different. And put it, Normally, I would have chosen the colour for the top and put the white right. box underneath. But again, doing it the other way around, popping the colour inside, you've got that reinforced box there, so it's all finished nicely. Chose, deliberately chose some paper that I got the spots on to keep that theme. And then you've got that uh, little gift box going on there. OK, awesome. so it doesn't have to be, because it's a 12 by 12 stencil, it doesn't have to be a big project. That's what I wanted to get across for you. No, absolutely, it doesn't. And the great thing is about it gives you, you know, the option. I'm just trying to fix this board, which I've had 15 minutes to fix, but chose. I was so mesmerised <laughs> by Jan's demo, I... I haven't fixed it. There we are. I fixed it now, I think. It will probably fall out again in a second. Let me take you back through these. I think they're all some value when you see what you're able to do with these. So what you're going to receive in here, uh, you buy six and get two free. So you're getting eight 11.75 square stencils here. So you've got your falling hearts, which is that one there. This one here is your wood grain. It's going to be great for distressing, especially over stuff like craft cardstock. This one's my favourite, uh, sketched swirls. It reminds me of, I think it is... No, I keep saying it's Dali. It's not doubt Dali. Gaudi. I'm thinking of Gaudi, not Dali. Who did the Sagrada Familia, the big church? Oh, in? you're That's asking Gaudi. me now. Sorry, I'm getting me Dali's and me Gaudi's mixed <laughs> up. <laughs> uh, this one, worse. this one in here. I mean, it's, it's not the worst mistake I've made on here. Chad, <laughs> let's face it. Dots and spots is this one uh, just here. Uh, natural stone is that one. That's really awesome. Uh, this one here is your deco tiles, which is gorgeous. Then you've got the Moroccan tiles. Oh, I really want to, I'd love to be in, it reminds me of, the Moroccan tiles actually remind me of like Andalusia, like south, southern Spain, you know, like Seville yeah. and those kind of places. Yeah. Oh, imagine blue, being, blue and white tiles. Yeah, yeah, all blue and white, just gorgeous. Yeah. And then this one here is that Chesterfield leather which is really lovely. What I love about this as well, you've got some that don't have a, too much open space on them. So if you are new at stenciling, then maybe give those ones a go. And then you've got some that have got more open space on. So you can really work up to them, which is fantastic. If you are um, going for these today, then you've got a great price on them. Platinum members, you save 25, 57 or 31, 84 here, uh, making 38 pounds or $47. So do grab those, they are awesome. And also, I think pretty much most of the lead items in the show today, if you are a Platinum member, you will get that free gift. Remember, when Platinum members spend over £15 dollars or euros today, you'll get a free gift. I'll show you what that gift is, actually. It's right here. And as you can see, it is one of our creator card dies. It is the... A summer scene that you're okay. Oh, you would not believe how close to the little screen that I had to get to try and read that and still couldn't read it. So thank you for that, Johnny. Um, lots of you tuning in from all over today. Georgie Ann's in Florida. Debbie's in New York. Uh, Shelley's in Michigan. Sarah's in Melbourne. Hi, Sarah. Um, Mary's saying good morning from Georgia. I love your shows. Always learning something new. And that's a great thing about these masterclass. You know, we pick them with products that we know a lot of you are already going to have. It's all about getting you back into your stash and rediscovering some things that maybe haven't had any love from you from a while. Christine says, good morning from Altoona, Pennsylvania. Started out today with a wake up call while getting ready this morning, then rewatched it whilst eating breakfast. Now it's time for a masterclass. Sounds like you're winning today, Christine. <laughs> Marilyn says, hello everyone. Good morning from an overcast New Jersey. Logged in to see Jan. I just love her. How cute Thank is you. that? Really lovely. Now, We've got a wonderful ink pad selection. I think you're going to love using these your stencils because you know me, Jan. I, Jan, I am a sucker for a bit of heat embossing. Yep. I really, really am. These are going to allow you to do that. Let me take you through the colours that you're getting in here. So you're going to receive the crushed velvet, which is this one just here. You've then got grasshopper. There's honeypot. Midnight. Orange. Uh, this one here is a spring meadow. Then you've got your pine tree. The Bordeaux, Lagoon, which is this one, oh, and this delicious one, which I know you're going to love, is, of course, the Parakeet. Uh, it's a 10-piece collection, uh, which is awesome. Not normally we see a 10-piece collection, to be fair, so it's great that we've got those uh, on the show for you. Quarter stock's already gone there since we started the show. £29.60 or $41.60 for Club Inspired Platinum members means you're looking at less than £3 an ink pad. 
for platinum, which is seriously good value. Really, really is. Now, something that Jan, I believe, launched here uh, on Crafters TV are the abstract shapes. I think these would work beautifully with those pigment ink pads that we've got for you. You've got blossoming florals. Uh, you're not only getting the focal image, you're then getting the sentiments that go around that too. Uh, so you've got that one there. You've then got this one, which is your uh, blooming heart. The shining star, I love that. It reminds me of a balloon, you know, like a, a foil helium balloon. That's just what it reminds me of. It looks awesome. Yeah, this one here as well is your perfect butterfly. You cannot have too many schmetterlings. Uh, the other great thing is, of course, you can mix and match all the sentiments across the four different collections, should you wish to. £28 or $35 if you want to get the whole of those. And you've got over 10% off there, which I think is lovely. I'm right in thinking you launched these, aren't I, Jan? I did, yes. Yes, I did. I, uh, I love, again, anything that's stamping. Uh, they, they sort of put my name on it. <laughs> they know that I love my stamp. Stamp your name on it. Honestly, I love it. Yeah, anything to... I love the fact... And this is what we're going to do now. We're going to start with a piece of white cardstock and turn it into something totally different. And I'm going to use that gorgeous butterfly today. And I'm going to stamp the butterfly out, but I want to make a background first to stamp it onto. So I'm going to keep the butterfly as a silhouette. Okay. And I'm going to use my black ink to stamp that out. So I want a nice, colourful background. And what I'm going to do we've also got on the show today our tri-blend markers we do. so i brought mine in today uh, and these are actually the watercolor markers so literally not tri-blend tri-color markers should i say uh, and again, in these, slightly different to the tri-blends. The, the principle's the same, that you've got the three pens here. I'll take the one out that I'm actually going to use. But you've got three different colours. So on this one, I've actually got the gold and that beautiful brush nib that we're accustomed to with the, uh, the, the aqua markers. And then in the centre here, I've got crimson, which is a beautiful red tone. And then on the other end, I've got sunset which is a nice orangey tone. And we're going to use all three of those now to make our background. So I've literally just chosen one pen and I've got some watercolour card. I'm going to bring in some water, just ordinary water I've got there. And I've actually got a paintbrush and I've got my water spritzer. So again, this is just ordinary tap water in here, ordinary tap water in my cup here. So note to self, don't drink said water. Right. Won't be the first time that my, pe my paintbrush has gone in the cup of coffee or vice versa. So what we're going to do, oh I've also got um, my little Spectrum Nar spritzer as well which yep. we've got in that lovely starter kit for you. Now I tend to work with both of these. This one is very directional so I will get like a jet of water out of this one. This one's more of a mister so you get more of an all over nice. spray. So for this technique I need this one. So I'm going to put the water spritzer back for a second. Beautiful watercolour card will take quite a lot of water before it actually starts. If you do this technique on ordinary cardstock, you'll sometimes find that the surface starts to come off and you get all those little bits and you, can't, you try and get rid of them and it makes it worse. The watercolour card is made to absorb that water. So what we're going to do, I'm going to work with one colour at a time and I'm going to start with the yellow one, the gold at this end. So I literally want to apply some colour onto here. So what I'm going to do is pop the colour on to look how gorgeous. Beautiful. Beautiful, robust colours there. And I just love this one. It, it, sort of, it reminded me of the spring that we haven't had. Yes. Certainly, certainly not here in the UK anyway. We really We're still haven't. in winter, I think. And then I'm going to start over on this left hand side here. And all I'm going to do is spritz the actual card. I want it wet, but just on that first third. And then literally pick up some of this colour and just watch when you put it into the Look how it wicks oh, onto nice. the card. So wherever you've got the water, it's just going to wick out into that water. So I'm literally just dotting it with my paintbrush straight from that craft mat into that space where I've got the water. And then you can actually move this about. Oh, it's like Fiona's coffee cup. Yes. <laughs> I love it when she puts those on. Yeah. And I never see, I don't know, I never see what Fee sees. She'll say, oh, I can see um, an old man approaching uh, something. And I'm looking at it thinking, oh, I can't see that. I don't know. So, yeah, I'm just literally letting the water move around. And can you see how it's moving that colour around there? So wherever you've got a little bit that's light, you can add some more in there. And just, I just want that on that first third. And the, it stays within the parameters of where that water's gone. 
So we're actually working in that space that we spritz there just to move it around. And then once you're happy with it, once you've got it to a state that you're okay with, I'm going to bring in the non-existent uh, heat tool. Oh, and comes. we're literally just going to dry this off. <laughs> it, is it is on. on. It it's is on. on. Definitely oh, no. on. And I'm just going to grab from underneath here, if I can. I'm trying to work with the other hand down here. Not doing very well. They're laughing at my heat tool again. They are, yeah. Just round the edges where you've got a surplus of... Uh... Can <laughs> yeah, you hear sure it? it's on? Oh, here we go, yeah. yeah. See, I have to put it on my microphone just to prove to them <laughs> that it's on. <laughs> Just, just, I don't know why I find it such a sense of amusement. <laughs> just just wafted it around for the sake of it, honestly. Yeah, it, yeah but look, my piece of card's actually dry now. It was, it was wet through before. So wherever you've got any excess, literally just... And then we're going to need it again in a minute, so I'll pop it there for a rest. Don't you dare. <laughs> All right, so that's the first third. And then I'm going to do the same with the other two colours. So in the centre, we're going to have that lovely sunset orange there. So again, same technique. <coughs> if you haven't got your glass mat, anything that's um, a non-porous surface, so it could be a, a, a glass, it could be a ceramic tile, it could be an old acrylic block, something like that. Anything to pop your colour on. So again, make sure you find where the mister is as well. Top tip. Won't be the first time I've sprayed myself I in the think eye you say with a it. Mister, like Mister and Mrs. Uh, yeah. Where's your Mister? Yeah, but make sure it's pointing to where you want it and not in your well, face. Well, funny yeah. story there. Uh, someone I worked with before at Crate and Craft, Hannah, the lovely Hannah, was a running joke that whenever she was in the studio prepping, I would always get a mister out of her bag when she wasn't looking and then oh. I'd speak to her and then I'd spr spritz her in the face. Oh. Uh, and it was hilarious. We laughed and laughed and laughed about it. About the tenth time I did it, she was like, that was alcohol in that one. <laughs> was oh, like, no, that's not good. She had her big glasses on, though. We were fine. Yeah. The big glasses, like, like goggles, like she yeah, knew you were, were coming. Like goggles. She was like, yeah, that, was, that wasn't water, that was alcohol. Mm. So again, just done the same again, and then you can get that water to actually move your colour around. And again, it's just staying in the parameters of where I've put that, that spritz. It's not sort of gone any further than the outline of where the water really is. really lovely. And I love playing about with this. And if you sort of start drying it while it's still moving around, let me see if I can get some detail going on it you get like a what i call a watermark on it so we'll get an area that sort of started drying nice and then can you see here where mm. we're creating that sort of extra piece on it I can play around i could play around with this all day and i guess you i mean you could just make sit you could, i bet you could spend a whole day making these just making you? backgrounds yeah. yeah it's a great one to do we all have days and i've heard people say it time and time again where they've lost the crafty mojo you sit down at your desk and you look at your cardstock or your paper bag and you think i've got a clue what to do with that today just not happening it happens to me sometimes i'll go in and start prepping and just think no nah, i'm not not on it today it's not working mm. can you see how we've created like that sort of extra really? Nice. watermark with it uh, but yeah sort of start making backgrounds is a great way to just sort of be crafty and have a play but then I keep these in a, a pot just sort of I've got them to play with uh, when I do get some some mojo back so last one is going to be that lovely red that crimson so it's not a really in your face red it's quite a, a pinky tone to it and we're going to do the same again on that last bit so spritz the card first get it nice and wet where you want that color to go and then again picking it up off the mat and just literally dab it into the water and the and water guess, can you play around with less water more water Jen? yep yep literally just have a go with it this one's actually i've got quite a lot of water on this bit so that's why i normally keep the uh either the tissue or the wet wipe just to stop it going where i don't want it so i want that to just move around on that last third of the card there and again, I love this sort of like, just tipping the card and getting that depth of colour right across that area. And as I say, if it goes too far, you can literally just take out some of the moisture and then we're going to dry again. 
So I've got those three shades there. You can do this with any of your colours. Now, if you want to start the colours mixing, of course, with this being watercolour, you can actually make your own shades. Awesome. So all you would do there is overspritz where your colour was before. So, for example, if I'd have put the red over the yellow, in the centre where they mix, you would get nice, a nice sort of orangey tone there. Awesome. So it's quite nice to play around with some of that as well, but just need to make sure that it's wet. Uh, for that colour to move around. So again, just finish that last little bit off there. Is it too wet? Again, just blot it with your uh, either tissue or your wet wipe. But this, this is what I mean about moving the water. I love that sort of, it's like a tide mark. Mm. So just finish that one off. And then we've got a nice background then for that black silhouette over the top. So make sure it's dry. And again, any heat on your cardstock will warp it slightly but it doesn't remember that. So all I tend to do is just give it a, a stretch out again and we're good to go. Perfect. Uh, if you're not working on it straight away, what I often do is actually pop these inside. I've got a really old um, dictionary at home. Mm. It's a really thick book. So what I tend to do is pop these in the pages and then leave it overnight okay. in That'll the book. flatten them back out. Just to flatten it back out, yeah, if you've been guessing, worried about it. I'm guessing you could also do that with any of your water-based inks, could you? Yes. That sort of technique. So this you, will work just the same like with your uh, Spectrum Noir Harmony ink pads as well. Okay. Anything. I could have done it with those shimmer paints that we started off with. So, yeah, right. anything that's water-based, Joe. But I just love the watercolour aspect of it. So, again, what we're going to do is over-stamp on this now. So I've got my stamping platform here because... I want to do more than one sort of image to one one press to get a really nice dark image on it so again just going to pop that on there and then we're going to take that lovely butterfly stamp that silhouette stamp there and we're going to stamp directly over the top here so you can decide where you want it we'll go a little bit of an angle there pick it up with my platform and then literally get some ink. Now, it doesn't really matter. I've actually got the alcohol one here because it was the first one I grabbed, but because we're not doing anything else with it, as long as your work is dry, it doesn't really matter what the ink is. If your work's a little bit damp, then obviously a water-based ink may bleed a little bit into okay. your background. So just make sure it's totally dry. If you're not convinced as to which way is the best to go, use the pigment inks and emboss it, clear okay. emboss it over the top. So I want a really nice dark image on here. So the first one's not usually too dark because obviously you've got the colours underneath. So that's why I've used my um, magnetic platform so that I can literally go in again and stamp I hope it's not too sticky top. today. Is, it's I'm not, not sure. too bad. I don't think Debbie, the fish hasn't it's, been in for a bit. Has she not? not. <laughs> I, do you know, I've not seen her for ages. Not seen a lot of the team, actually. So we're like ships that pass in the night. Mm. Not seen our Debs for a while. I've not seen Fiona for an absolute age. We're all sort of doing our own thing. The only person I see on a regular basis is our Craig. Yeah. Because he's usually here when I get here. So. Uh, it's watching right now, apparently. Here's a, How do you know this, Charlotte? Oh. So again, you can build, can you see how it gets darker with each pass? We could do it again and you'll get that really dark sort of image on there. So he literally. Sent, he sent a picture in of him watching. He's sent in a picture. What's mm. he been up to? Watching you He's now. watching me. Doesn't need to watch me. Hey, right, let's up just. some hints and tips. Is he? Yeah. Bless him. Right, let's put those to one he side. He said he's, I'm going to watch Jan and then hopefully I'll get a few more wins on the card of the week. That's what he said. <laughs> So, fine liner pens then, again, waterproof once they're dry. And you've seen me do this plenty of times. In fact, I'm going to come to the one that I've actually matted and layered here. I've done exactly the same, but you can nice. see where we've got to. So I've made the background, stamped over the top. I've matted it onto a piece of black cardstock and put some tape on it, apparently. And then I've just done that sort of squiggly bit around the edge again. Just, you see here, it looks nice like this. But when you add the frame to it, it just draws that eye into where you want it to go. And I've deliberately left this last bit just to show you, because people think, oh, I can't draw a line on my work, I'll spoil it. You deliberately don't go for straight. So I'm literally going to go wobbly all the way along. Whoops. Literally up and down, up and down, up and down to the other end, and then come back to the beginning. Where I went down, I'm going to go up this time and literally just thread it over the top of the one that's there and then some point I normally add 
a little bit of a looks like a bit of stitching on it and can you see how just oh, cool. by adding the frame and the black mount how much difference it makes mm, to huge it huge amount so with actually using the black stamp for the silhouette i wanted the black behind it so we'll work with that one soon as I've got that ready. And then literally to pop that onto a card, I wanted to pick out one of the colours just to give it, rather than again using a bit of cardstock, you know, you can use your, your, your textured cardstocks, your pearlized cardstocks, your Centura pearl, but this is actually a piece of stamping card again. And found out that our honey pot ink is the perfect match for that gorgeous golden yellow that we had nice. on here. So all I've done is I've taken one of my tools, whether it be the sponge or the applicator, and just literally inked the edge of it, because we're gonna cover up the middle, so don't waste your ink. But that's now made a perfect border for my card there. So let's see if we can get some tape off the back. Got a bit giddy with the tape, I think. I've got a new reel of tape, and it was like, let's try it out, clearly. Here we go, look, this one's playing, we're all right now. It's realised that we're on air and it needs to behave. <laughs> it's just so, it's, it's tele tape, that's what it is. <laughs> I've gone for a top fold on this one and we're just going to mat and layer that one in the centre. Okay. And then literally all I have done is stamp out a little sentiment and you've got these on your stamp set. So I've got wishing you happiness, which I've stamped out here for this one. You are always in my thoughts, which is a beautiful sentiment. And I like this one. Life isn't perfect, but it does have its perfect moments. So again, oh, some really cute. nice sentiments in there. So again, we're going to pop this one in the top there. I'll not bother with the... Um, foam pads we'll just go with the tape pen there we'll use the double-sided tape pen do you know it, it surprises me it's like some things I have prepped and then I turn something else over and I've missed that bit so we'll just go at a little pop it options, down there because it's not covering up as much of the uh, the design sorry Joe I said you've got so many options when it comes to yeah places. just sort of having a look I didn't want to cover up too much of it and then I've got a little tiny butterfly punch at home so I've literally just punched out a black one that I'm just going to make a, a focal point out of there nice. so I want a little tiny tiny bit of uh, hot glue on there and I only need a little bit because it's only a tiny butterfly there very busy go. on these as we knew it would be loads of lovely They're comments gorgeous. coming in as well so much you can do with them and then i'm just going to pop that one over the top there and then i've just picked a little um enamel dot that matched one of those colors but again you know starting out with that piece of white card and this is what i enjoy doing it completely transforming it from what was a piece of watercolor card into something totally different and very sort of summery tropical some uh, uh, colors there and then you've got that lovely abstract stamp just done as a silhouette but you could actually one of the other techniques i wanted to show you said so this is where i start with it and think oh there's so many different things you can actually use your pens direct to the stamp right and actually uh, stamp the color out so we could have had this the other way and had the butterfly in the three color tones save you that one for another show all right awesome. but Lots just to ideas, show so. you my practicing you can see this is pretty much what we did but it's a little bit lighter so it's a, it's a bit more pastel so if I show you the one we've just put together and the one that we did at the top of the show you can see just depending on how much color you put on again really really strong color this one I actually put the color I use my watercolor and put the color at the top here right and then use the spritzer bottle to spray it and let it run down the card oh, okay Doesn't and then take... i've turned it round and done it the other way so we've got the color at the top and bottom with the butterfly in the middle so again so many different ways that you can use them and then as i say i'll on another show i'll show you if we have the tri blends on again i'll show you how to use these direct to the stamp and again you can get a really nice colored stamp or if you spritz your cardstock first you get that lovely diffused effect with the the, the watercolour again so again so many different ways to use them there absolutely uh, they are fantastic um, uh, and you're going to absolutely love putting them together I'll show you the stamps and I'll take you through the tricolour markers 
as well. So just to recap, and again, you're gonna be able to do this with all of these different styles. Remember what you've got are the different sentiments in there as well. So with the flower here, you've got you make me smile. Thank you so much, you are wonderful. That one is your blossoming floral. And then in the blossoming heart, you've got have a beautiful day, you're blooming fabulous. Friendship is a flower that blooms in all seasons. They're really quite sweet and whimsical, aren't they? This one here is your shining star and you've got it's your time to shine, you're amazing and also believe you can and you are, you're halfway there. Sometimes a bit complicated reading these upside down. Perfect butterfly here and this one says uh, you are always in my thoughts. Uh, I wish you could see what I'm having to do to read Life these. Is Life isn't perfect, but it does have perfect moments and wishing you happiness. There we are. We got there in the end. Uh, right, £28, $35 if you want to get your hands on those. Uh, we've also got as well the tricolour markers. Now, these are excellent. Individually, uh, if you want to come, how they come is essentially in three pen packs. Each of these sections on this board is a pen. And what the great thing about them is that you get 12 pens, it's the full collection because it's offering you uh, 36 colours, which is brilliant. If you were getting them individually, you'd be looking at 9 99 or 14 95 each. So the price on your screen, you're actually not paying, you're not even paying full prices for the pens. And then what you're going to get is the case included free of charge. So what you've got, each pen has three colours in it that are designed and curated to work together. And then the three pens will work together in, as complementary colours in one project. So it's all been curated so you know that you're going to get something that works together so you've got also your color basics your essential neutrals and then the great outdoors in there too so they're all going to work together beautifully but then we're going to give you're not paying for the pens and yet we're giving you the case free of charge worth 12 pounds or 17 dollars the case and you can see this then stores everything in there which is fantastic you've got a little space in here as well, so if you did want to put uh, some scraps of card or you know a little project in there, you've absolutely got room to do that. I think they're fantastic, uh, especially if you. Do you know? I think a lot of people will already have the whole collection of the aqua markers and will come back for these. Because if you're travelling, uh, you know, you're going off on a car journey, maybe you're popping out, you know, having a little staycation. It's wonderful. You've got a whole colouring system in one. Uh, little pouch there which is brilliant and great value you can use your club inspire discount on top of those as well if you want to uh, of course you want to 30 pounds 40 or 45 60 for platinum members to get their hands on those which is awesome now this is a great deal that we've got for you as well a lot of you've gone for this it was featured in the wake up call this morning and you guys loved it and you've got uh, pretty much everything you need when it comes to uh, your sort of blending techniques. So in here, you're going to get the brayer, which is great for... Oh, I'm gonna, I knew I was going to do that. You're gonna, it's going to be great for adding uh, down lots of different colour, wonderful for using with things like your embossing folders as well. Here you've got your craft mat. Now, if you don't have the luxury of having the big glass mat, this is going to do the same sort of job, but you can roll it up and put it away, which is brilliant. You've got your two blending tools here, so you've got your square and your round and the refills that go with that. You've got your blending eggs, which are these ones just here, which are great for uh, applying ink and paints and all sorts of different wonderful things. The spritzers as well that we talked about come included. And then you've got that mixing palette there for when you would want to create your own colours, which is fantastic. Lots of you chatting away still. Valerie's, Valerie says, Jan is just chock full of great ideas, isn't she? She really is. Lorna says, I love when Jan does a mixed media class, very inspirational. Mandy Doodle Hands says, good afternoon, everyone. Happy birthday to me. I've come to share it with you, you lovely crafty lot. Well, happy birthday, Mandy Doodle Hands. Uh, are you just saying good morning to all my fellow crafters? Uh, so great to see the Queen of Mixed Media back for a tutorial. Jan is great, and hello to Joe and the CC uh, crew from New Jersey. Uh, Yolanda loves Jan's box. Rhonda says, I received the entire set of the Colour Blend pencils on Saturday and coloured my very first stamped image. I'm not a colourist. Really pleased with how it turns out as well. Uh, Pam saying, I love uh, the creator scene die. Can't wait for my orders to arrive. Thank you for that freebie. Uh, and finally, Linda says, I love all the demonstrators and the presenters, but for me, who likes to learn, uh, but needs someone to, who takes things step by step, uh, just like a teacher, brings me running to see Jan learn. So thank you, Jan, for that. And Molly agreeing, you can never have enough schmetterlings in your collection. Now, one of the exciting things about shopping with us here at Crafters TV is we give you lots of options when it comes to uh, how we dispatch your products to you. Here is Ben to take you through all those details. To our shipping charges, and we want to keep you informed. 
With continued pressure on domestic shipments around mainland US, we've had to temporarily increase the cost of our regular 6 to 10 working day standard shipping service from $9.99 to $12.95 and our free shipping threshold from $100 to $125. We also have some really great news to tell you. We've introduced a brand new shipping service called Express Delivery. This is a fully tracked door-to-door -door service which takes three to seven working days and costs $19.95. This option means you'll get your crafty goodies in your hands sooner, meaning less waiting and more crafting. We're also upgrading delivery services for our gold and platinum Club Inspire members who will now receive priority delivery on all of their orders. And if that wasn't enough, we've upgraded these orders to our new express three to seven day service. Your patience and understanding throughout this very busy time has been amazing. So we'd just like to say a huge thank you and we look forward to chatting to you again very soon. Hi, I'm Sarah from Crafters TV and I'm here to show you how you can get the best deals and shop while you watch during our shows. The best way to watch us is always on Crafters TV. So head over to our homepage and go to Crafters TV home where you can see all of our shows, plus exclusive offers and even shop while you watch. Now, if you want to get involved and comment along, you can head on over to our community pages. Come say hello, ask us some questions and chat along live with us. Or you can watch us on YouTube. Simply head to our Crafters Companion YouTube channel. Got a smart TV? You can even airplay our shows direct onto your big screen or stream us live through YouTube. We're constantly adding new and exciting shows to our schedule, so don't forget to check in. It's never been easier to have us in your living room. It's always fun here at Crafters TV, so come join us as we create every day. Welcome to Club Inspire, the crafters companion community where you can feed your crafty obsession. Join our fantastic loyalty club today and receive 20% of your first order. We'll also give you 250 points to help get you started. Other benefits of joining Club Inspire include exclusive special offers and discounts for Club Inspire members only, exclusive sneak peek previews of brand new product launches, and of course the Club Inspire community group on Facebook where you can access exclusive content such as downloads, offers and inspiration and of course you can chat and share your makes with other members. You'll receive one point for every pound, dollar or euro you spend and the more points you receive, the more benefits you'll unlock. So what are you waiting for? Sign up, join the club and start rewarding yourself today. All the details about absolutely everything there. Uh, right, I want to come back and just quickly take you back through that pigment ink pad collection that we've got because it's very, very busy on these uh, at the moment. A really nice size collection with a lot of your favourite colours in there. That one there is your crushed velvet. You're also going to receive the grasshopper, the honey pot. You've got the midnight in here, orange. Then there's spring meadow, pine tree, bordeaux, Lagoon, and finally the parakeets. So like 10 of our hero colors that you've got in there. 37 pounds or 52 dollars. That would make them three, what, three pounds 70 or five dollars 20 per ink pad, which is good value for money. However, if you are uh, in the club, of course, which all of you are, then you'd be looking at uh, 29.60 or 41.60, makes them less than three pounds, just over four dollars per ink pad. And don't forget, you're going to get that free gift as well. Every, if you are a platinum member and you're spending over 15 pounds, dollars or euros today, you will get this brand new, uh, so you will get this creator card a lot of you I'm right in thinking will not have seen this uh, particular die as well I don't think it was something that was available uh, in the US or as has ever been so uh, yeah while stocks last I'll add so definitely place your order sooner rather than later if you're thinking about using that we are going back to the large stencil are we going back to the large stencils we are going to <laughs> we'll cut that bit out uh, after that, after the show. Now, these were labelled as 5x7 on the website, Jan, you know? Yes, but 
And I thought, I that, gosh, that they? looks a bit bigger than seven inches. And <laughs> turns out, Craig measured them, they were nine inches. Yeah. Uh, so, what you're going to get in here is the hearts, the leaves, you've got the circles. This one's your zigzag. And you've also got the stars in there as well. Now, I know we bought these out with the big words, Jan. Yes. But that doesn't mean, I mean, we said it all along when we launched them together, didn't we? They'd be great in their own right. So, should we be worried about the fact, oh, they launch with something, therefore they're going to make them less craftable when we use them away from what they were launched with? Not at all. They will both work independently. So if you bought the actual words, they will work by themselves. If you bought the stencils on their own, they will work by themselves. I always think stencils are a little bit like embossing folders. They're a bit like the unsung heroes. We've all got stencils in our stash. You may have got a free one on a magazine. You might have dipped your toe in and bought one. But then it's like, what do I actually do with them? So that's where I come in to try and give you as many ideas as we can. You using different products, different Excellent. mediums to actually get them uh, into use basically because they can be a really good tool. So I've actually brought my art journal back again because I know last time I did this you all were, uh, you sort of really enjoyed it and I know I had, uh, I can't remember the lady's name but there was one lady actually messaged me to say that she'd been and bought her journal and she'd done her first page spread and she'd done a nice. fabulous job for the first time, said she was really enjoying it. So, uh, so yeah, I brought mine back and again there's one or two of you I've been through this before just to show you oh, wow. things that I've done. But again, you know, just an art journaling is really just a means of sort of having a good play. Yes, you can journal. You can't quite see on this one. There is a little bit of writing on here. Um, you don't have to journal in it. It can just be an expression of art. It's a great way of trying out new products. So things like stamps, colours, things like that. It's a brilliant way of doing it. So again, if I just flick through and show you one and or two of the pages. pages. Is, it a, is it a specific product? This is actually, uh, it's as cheap as chips watercolour book. Okay. And what I tend to do when I'm working on it is stick two pages together right. to make it a little bit more substantial. But because it's watercolour, like I said before, it's fine at absorbing the, uh, the water. So again, you know, I was just thinking about Wednesday. So, yeah, just a little bit about that. That one's not actually I had any other. It wants a bit more work on that one. That was just more so the backgrounds. Yeah. If at first you don't succeed, try a different colour. <laughs> Love that. That one's for you, Joe. I know you like yeah, the colours. Yeah, try all Again, the colours. Again, that one wants a bit more work on it. We have a long-standing thing at home about never being able to remember all the reindeer names at ah, Christmas. Well, so again, we literally just use my little individual uh, letter stamps and, and stamp them all out. So they're there now to remember. Uh, the world would be a boring place if all the trees were green. It would. You know, they're just sort of these quirky bits and pieces. Uh, this was one of our uh, quirky stamps. Again, I love this. This describes me perfectly. <laughs> My brain is experiencing technical difficulties. Please stand by. Love it. <laughs> and then last time I was here, we did this one. And I'd done a lot of the work and just finished it off to show you a little bit. What I'm going to do today, I've actually done this one at nice. home. And I'm going to go through right from the beginning. Now, I'm not going to do it in my journal because obviously I don't want two layouts that are exactly the same. So I'm literally going to work on a piece of watercolour card. So all of you at home, if you don't have journals, I'm sure you've got watercolour card in there. And I'm going to show you right from the basics, starting with literally the blank page. Now, do you, as to is how this we get you've to this. Have you done for a while? Have you got other journals that are finished, Jan, or is yeah. it? Yeah, uh, well, I've got lots of different size ones. And okay. I mean, it doesn't even have to be anything special. You can actually use an old book. And okay. literally stick two or three pages together and then your friend is your gesso, which we've got on the show. And this literally just coats the pages. So if it's a book that's got writing in, the gesso will cover it and it prepares it to receive other mediums. So if it's a book that's got photos in or pictures in, gesso over the top, couple of coats, it covers what's underneath. But it's a way of recycling books that you maybe don't need anymore or books. I, I tend to get mine from the... Um, charity shops and things okay. like that. So if people have used them and they've passed them on, it's a way of upcycling. So what I'm gonna do is pop that to one side and then I'm gonna bring, literally all I've done is taken a couple of sheets of watercolor card and I've stuck them together to make it a bit more robust. Nice. So rather than just having the one thickness, I've got two together. Now I have gone a little way forward because I wanted the texture paste to dry. But what I've got at home from my journaling days is I've got lots and lots of different scraps of paper 
paper. So some of it is just plain paper that's been tea dyed or coffee dyed, so literally used coffee to spritz on it. I mix coffee up with water in a lot bigger one of these and just spritz it and you get this gorgeous sort of stained effect on here. These are literally book pages, old music pages, whatever you've got lying around you can use. And what I've done is I've torn some of them and literally just done a little bit of collage on the back, you can see there. So that's been stuck down with, and this we've had this on the show previously, we had lots of different um, adhesives and seals. So I like the matte one because obviously I don't want any sheen on this at this point because I'm going to add things to it. So matte glue, seal and glaze. So you can paint it on with a paintbrush, stick your papers down and then right. go straight over the top of it again as a glaze and it seals that first nice. layer. You've heard me talking lots and lots about layers with mixed media. So this bit here is an old roll of um, washi tape that I've got in my drawer. So again, I've literally just taken a little bit of that off and stuck it on. And then all over the top of this, I've put the gesso. So once I've got my paper on and the little bit of washi on there, I've taken the white gesso and just with a brush, painted the whole thing to seal it. And that's what's pushed. If you look at this one here, how bright it is. Yeah, right. you see how it pushes it into the background. Mm. So when your work's finished, it's not obvious, but if you just look here, just in the background, you've got that little bit of detail where you can see the music paper peeking oh, nice. through. I've got a little bit of text peeking through. So it's just a suggestion in the background. So the white gesso pushes it all back and then it literally allows you to start working on top. And then I use that beautiful, uh, I've got them out and put them somewhere safe. There we go. That beautiful botanical garden out of that stencil set. And we're going to use this again in a little while, but I wanted the texture paste to be dry. So the same range as the gesso. Now we've not actually got this in stock at the moment, but I am working on it for you guys because I use this a lot. So I've spoken to the so team. Does it, does it almost have a translucency to it? Then, uh, no, this is actually white. It okay. looks very similar to the gesso. They're easy to get mixed up. Um, right, the so difference is, paste, is the modelling paste. Like we talked about earlier, Joe, this dries with a raised finish. Right. The gesso is like a primer, like a paint. So if you imagine decorating at home, you normally prime your walls first to receive the paint. So that one works the I same. I mean, you uh, you could you're speaking a foreign me. language you're not a to me, Jan. Joe. Decorating involves calling up a company and they send someone down and then there they do the painting and the wallpapering for you. That's not half as much fun. Yeah, a modelling paste. So this comes under different names. Sometimes it's called structure paste. Sometimes oh, I've heard it it's called, that. called texture paste. Sometimes it's called modelling paste. It depends on the company. Can we Ours mix other from things? Pebio. Can we mix things with it? Yes. You can, you can mix all sorts with it to colour it. So your sparkle inks, you'll get a sparkly texture paste. Ooh. Those lovely shimmer paints that we had earlier, I've got that gorgeous purple there as well. You could mix that in with it and it'll colour it. It could be uh, ink from your um, aqua pens that we've chosen. The only thing that I wouldn't use is an alcohol marker. Okay. You want a water-based product. So aqua tint, sp uh, sparkle, uh, tints that kind of thing anything like that if you've got watercolor paints at home you can actually color it and make it into a colored paste and that applies to any of them but i actually want to add my color to it as we go along so i'll just bring this up a little bit higher for our charlotte and you can just see where i've got some of that texture on there already nice. so i've run that texture paste through the stencil in a couple of different places look and a bit down this side just to get it dry so that I can work on top of it so that's as far as I've got and that's the first thing that I would do when I start on that double page spread so I literally stick my pages together decide what collage I want underneath it get that gesso over the top of it and then apply what stenciling you want on top of it so that's as far as we've got and then it comes to adding your detail now when I was here the other week Joe we had that good gorgeous um, chinoiserie pad oh it's so lovely and when it? you were flicking through this I just thought yes I actually love this look if I show you let me find the right one uh, it was a piece of paper where's it gone here we go look nice. yeah look at that and then look at the flowers in oh. my art journal cute yeah yeah so all I've done is I fussy cut some of these out 
and I've actually used That's them so clever. in the focal point in my journal. And I saw, when, I, when you were flicking through it, I thought, oh, I love it, I love it. So this mm. time, uh, we've actually gone for, I've just seen it, I've just passed it. Where's it gone? This one. Uh, yeah, this one this time. I can feel the excitement coming yeah. off you flicking Honestly, through this Honestly, I love pageant. it. I just love playing around with it. So again, it's got those beautiful big florals on. So what I've done is I've literally just sat and fussy cut. You can see, look, where these have come from. Just fussy cut some of the pieces out because I'm going to use those on the bottom section. Don't worry if they've gone off the edge of the page because you can use this as the edge of your sheet. So not to worry. So I've got some of those at the ready. Just wanted to show you where I've got those from. And those I'm going to build up in this corner down at the bottom here. So we're literally going to sort of pop these in, but I'm going to do some colouring. In fact, no, we'll stick these on. We'll get these stuck down so that we know where we're going with it. So I'm going to bring that glaze in again that, uh, that acts as a glue, first of all. And I'm just going to use a little bit thicker paintbrush this time. <coughs> Decide where these are going and then pop a bit of this onto here and literally just get that covered on the base awesome. don't worry if it looks messy at the moment that's the whole idea and then literally we're going to pop these on and once you've got them in place you're going to go over the top of them as well so it sort of seals them in place because if i left these without any coating on when i start with the uh, watercolour mediums right. it's going to soak into that paper okay. so this protects them it makes them stick but it also protects them from re for the receiving that next layer so across the bottom here we've got a couple of bits that one was going to fill a gap there so again all those little pieces don't think oh well it's only part of a flower it, uh, it's not going to work the and thing then, is when you seal them like this as well they don't look like they don't look like they're stuck on do they sort of become part of the substrate that's the whole the, the, yeah, the, the base whole layer. idea yeah you've got it there in one jaw you want it to become part of the work and not just look like something you've plonked on top there at a last minute thought so again just going over the top there make sure it's all sealed and then we're going to put that last one and it looks as if I'm using a lot of this, but honestly, it's not as much as you think. This one's going to go on here. And again, once it's on, just stick it down there. And I, obviously, you've got a lot more time at home. I'm going a lot quicker here than I would do at home because I want to try and get as much of this in. And it's strange how it doesn't really look like... It was only until you, when you pointed it out, I could see that it was the flowers from the pad. Yeah. When they're arranged differently, they just look so different, don't they? Honestly. And then that last little one's just going to fill that gap. So I actually had these laid out in place when I did my stenciling because I've just brought the... You can see where this stenciling works around. So I did have these just laid in place. I'd not stuck them on because I wanted to show you how I'd arrived at that point. Now, this dries quite quickly again. Um, but also, if you know it's not drying as fast as you want get that imaginary heat tool out and get it going <laughs> all right so we're just going to pop that to one side i'm just going to have a little uh, white because it is an adhesive that so we don't want everything sticking to it so let me just get that off the, the mat there and then i'm just going to take my scissors from the back and trim these extra pieces off so just to keep it level with oops the original piece i'm just going to take those off and if you do that from the back you can just line it up with the cardstock there okay so those are actually surplus to requirement there so we'll just get those out of the way and you can see now where we've got that piece starting to come together so this is all pretty much, it's nearly dry there, it's dry enough to carry on. So the next stage then is to start and add some colour and different ways again to do this. I've actually pulled one, I love working with these uh, watercolour pens because again it brings you that sort of range of things that you can do with them. Yes, you can actually take them direct to paper and colour with them, which okay. is how they were intended, but there's so much more. So just like we did with that last demo, I'm literally going to take some of that lovely uh, hot pink, which is a really nice sort of rose pink colour, onto here. 
and I'm going to use a bit of this first but then for some depth I'm going to bring you now we haven't actually got the chalk paints on the show today there should be some on the website and I know a lot of you guys got, got these when we first brought them to you so this one's actually orchid which blends lovely with the pink that I'm using from the uh, the tricolor range so again we'll just start off and I'm going to go back to that slightly smaller brush this time into the water pick up some of that paint that, that colour and literally I'm going to go on the top here so we're going to get that mister again just like we did when I did that last technique and we're actually going to start and move some of that ink so all of a sudden you can see how it's actually moving about on the nice. the card here now I need to try and do this a lot quicker than what I would do at home because I want to get right through to the end um, so again just move it about where you want it to be and it's fine it's not going to move things like the texture paste around no, everything's no. dry underneath and that gesso is protecting the cardstock so it's not going to damage your cardstock or the paper that's underneath or the flowers because we've got that glaze so again just by moving it you can get that color to run around where you want it to go and you can use this the more that you add the more depth of color you're going to get and you can see i'm not being particularly careful just get it on there you know it's it's not not anything to be afraid of and then i'm just using that spritzer to allow it to move into places on the actual uh, design and then the paint works just the same so the paint's a little bit thicker so you get a slightly different coverage but again if i pop a little bit of that out and we'll do this at the other side so again if i just spritz this top area here so that it's already wet and then when we pop that paint into here just literally and you can see I'm not being particularly careful or skillful I'm literally now going to move it nice. with that water. That's brilliant and I would not think about doing that with a paint and I guess if you really build up the texture paste will it sort of run in the in crevices between, of the, yeah. the yeah. paste? So you can see how some of the leaves are still coming out white look because it's mm. actually running down. Now if you get sort of too much going on Again, just keep a, a tissue or a, a wipe handy because this has gone a long way down here and I don't want to work that far down just yet. But again, where it's at the top and it's still thicker, just move it around and you can decide where you want it to go. And any point, if you're happy with it, get that heat tool out again and you can start and just dry that section off. They're laughing at me again my non-existent heat tool uh, yeah someone's asking actually mandy doodle hands is asking where did you get your silent heat tool do you know i've had this an absolute age and i'm I not bet really it'll last sure. forever you know because yeah. it doesn't really sound like much it happening. says <laughs> heat buddy craft tool there you and go. i cannot remember where it came from i've had it probably about 20 years wow so and i use it and use it all the time i do have a directional heat <laughs> do you know gun. what it reminds me of <laughs> which is why it tickles me i think as a kid at home, I used to have like a pretend McDonald's drive through that <laughs> opened out and friends would have their, you know, little toy cars and they'd come around to the drive through and I'd have like a pretend till and like pretend burgers and you'd give it to them and they'd drive off again. <laughs> and I just imagine that, you, I just imagine you've had this since you were like four and it was like a little pretend crafting thing. That's what happens in my head every time you use it. Honestly, it's, uh, it, 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 it's never let me down yet. As I say, I've had it, it's the only one I've had. I've got a directional one, as I say, but I don't use that as much. I prefer it's a lot more gentle. It's, it's, they are available They're on, Googling the, uh, for me they now, are on the internet. They're out of stock. Do you know what else I had as a kid growing up? My uncle built it for me, was a fake petrol pump. As Ooh. a kid, when I was about four or five, I used to be obsessed with petrol pumps. <laughs> don't ask me why. Uh, so much so that my uncle bought me a pretend, built me out of wood a pretend petrol pump so I could pretend to fill my car, my toy car up that I was in my little car that I used to sort of drive along. <laughs> So again, whenever you're happy with it, for want of them, keep chuckling. I'm going to keep using this. <laughs> Just to um, dry off where you've got to. There's nothing to stop you working on top of it again. Kathy want... says she's loving everything you're doing today, Chan, as is Mandy. Uh, Jen says she loves watercolor. So she really loves that abstract butterfly. Uh, nice, to, nice 25 US says 
Uh, hi Jan, always good to see you in your amazing demos. Uh, and uh, Heidi's got a question, when you stick pages together, do you use stick and stay or glue? If you use glue, what kind? I Shall love I tell all things you, mixed media. As cheap as chips, glue stick as you can find. Is it? Yeah, it doesn't have to be anything special to put the pages together. So I oh, just literally okay. just buy, uh, not even a branded glue stick. I buy mine from my local supermarket. They're a pound a stick. Like a PVA glue? Yeah, just, just, just the, like, like a are, Pritz yeah. stick. But as I yeah. say, you don't even have to pay for a brand. Right, uh, okay. Mine are just a supermarket brand and literally just glue all the stuff pop it together and then as i say i tend to leave it with something heavy on it uh, just for it to um to, to sort of finish off and leave it overnight so that it's stuck well together awesome. so again i'm just going to bring in um a slightly different color just to give it a bit of um contrast so this one's actually umber and again it's the chalk paint whoops I'm getting giddy now. I'm just putting it straight oh, yeah. on there, look, Splashing because it, on. it does take a little bit of time. And I know we've not got masses of time, so I just want to get the idea across. But again, you can see that I'm not being particularly careful. And you might think, well, that looks a right mess, Jan. But again, once we get that spritz in it, it's directional. So you can get it to go wherever you want it. And what's happening is it's actually bringing out the texture of those stencils now. So again, if it's starting to go where you don't want it, just blot that excess off there. But again, you'll never get the same thing twice with these. It's, I just love the sort of like how it behaves and, and where it goes. It's like this one's actually encroaching on the pink now, which looks, so I just push it that way just to decide where it wants to go. And again, you can spread it out with your, your brush if you want it to go further around. Really lovely. I love the way it ties in the colour of the with flowers With the flowers, as well. yeah, which is where I've picked the original colours for. These are protected. Remember, we put that glaze on. So even though there's a lot of water going over them, it's not actually affecting those flowers because they've got the glaze on. So again, I just want to move this around a little bit so that we've got bit, pretty much colour everywhere there. And then I want to really heat it well, Joe, now, just to get it to set before I do the next stage. So it might just take a couple of seconds to yeah, get it no dry, worries. Joe. Uh, loads of people chatting away with us still. Um, Evelyn says, what do you do with the art journal when you're done with it? Do you use it for inspiration? Do you write down what items you use in the journal? Are you going to give it to someone? It, I'd, I've just got them on my bookshelf. Sometimes I'll get them out and sit and have a look through them. As I say, it's a way of trying out techniques and things like that. So if you've got a new stamp, you could actually log what's on them. I do often date them so that I know when I've done them. You can actually write on top of them. So if it was, you know, sort of done in conjunction with something, you can actually write little um, memos or quotations or if you've got a favourite poem or anything like that, you can write on it. It's, it's just a way of expressing your art. Art. and the reason I like it is because you can keep it and look through it mm. quite often when we're making cards we're giving them away to people you know you're gifting them as a you know to a friend or a family member or whoever for an occasion so all that lovely time that you've spent you know doing that gorgeous piece of work someone else gets the benefit of it which is great but the art journal is actually something that you can keep and get the uh, you know the enjoyment out of looking through it yourself and also if it is a particular technique you can document what you've used how you you've done it and it does act as a reference point as well so there's lots and lots of stuff out there online if you want to go if you just google art journaling particularly on youtube there are far better art journalers out there than me i just love playing at it so we've got nearly dry there and then i'm going to go on with another layer then so ideally it wants to be properly dry but i'm just concerned as i say that we've not got as much time here as we would if we were at home so let me just dry that off and then i'm going to bring that stencil back in now and i'm going to go to some ink okay so again using lots of different mediums and if you remember if you were watching at the top of the show i said that's what art, uh, what mixed media was all about so i've actually got our harmony water reactive ink now and i've got um again the sponge applicator and I'm going to bring the stencil back in now and I'm just going to highlight certain areas of it now with the so actual this is stencil that we use for the this is what I put the texture, the texture paste yeah. through yeah which you can just see now in that detail here you can see those leaves in here but I actually want to make some of it stand out a bit more so I'm literally just going to go through some of it with the ink 
And again, there's no exact science to this. You know, it doesn't have to be in a certain place. You don't have to worry whether your mats and layers match up and whether they're straight. Just get it down there as an expression. But can you see how this is actually tying it in together now? Nice. So again, I'm going to come up into that corner and just add a bit. Not even worried that the stencil's not lined up with what's underneath. It really is about layer upon layer to just actually bring out the detail there and link it together and then I'm just going to do a little bit in that gap just there. Diana says the process is so wonderful to watch as hypnotic as watching colouring. Uh, who is it saying here? The glass mat is a game changer says Rhonda. Aisha says she loves it, how you just go with the flow Jan uh, and Christine says Jan the newly crowned queen of mixed media is what Christine says. Oh, um, did we find out what the white bottle of glue was that Jan used earlier on? This one, that's the one. It's Cosmic Shimmer, and there is a range of these. This one's the matte finish. You can actually get um, a shimmer finish, and you can get a gloss finish in it. It all does the same job. It's essentially a glue, but it also acts as a glaze, and that's what I like about it. So you can stick things down with it, but by going over the top of it, it's sealed all this, and it's protected it from all that water and everything that was going on. Now, I'm not particularly keen on how dark this bit is here. So again, I'm just going to doctor it a little bit with my uh, doctor gesso. It. Just doctor my it. Yeah. Mum's, my mum uses that term. I've never so, heard anyone else use that term. Again, I'm just going to take a little bit of the gesso there and just add. And it just pushes everything back that little bit. So again, just take it back that bit so that it's not quite as, uh, as dark there. So wherever you want it just to pop that in the background and then we'll use something over the top of there. So, and what I've got the, for the last stage is actually some embellishments. So again, if I bring the one back in that I did at home, I've actually put on there, and you may recognize this one, all right, Sarah launched the um, garden party collection yesterday, which we've got on the show later tonight. But I just adored this bird cage, so I stole it from my prep for later, right. and I just wanted to actually make. And what I've done is I've stamped it onto a little bit of gold shimmer paper, and then cut out a couple of layers with the die and craft card to build it up again to make it into more of a, an embellishment. So it's quite a it makes it a bit like um, a chipboard embellishment rather than just a piece of paper. So let me just get rid of that uh, piece of bit of gesso before we end up with it everywhere. Okay. Uh, Rhonda says, uh, Jan is just amazing at Mitch Media. So I was gracious, says, I love this paper, Jan, so pretty. You are a great teacher. And uh, ha Molly says, Jan's whole journal is absolutely spectacular. Loving seeing how this Thank goes together. Thank you. So literally, I'm going to pop this one on as an embellishment and I'm going to do that with some of the, uh, the tacky glue because we're going over the top of all those different mediums. That tacky glue is a perfect um, grab. You could use your glaze again, your seal and glaze that we had at the beginning, but because I've actually stuck two or three layers together, I know that the tacky glue is up to the job. I want this to stay in place. So I'm literally going to pop this sort of here. And then I've just taken my fine liner pen again. And again, I'm going to come from the top there because we don't want this in midair. We want it to look as if it's actually hung. So you can see all those same techniques coming in again. Beautiful. Just to see that that one's hanging. And then I've also stamped out a couple of little butterflies. And again, use those pens. So I've used that direct to, uh, to paper on this one and then brushed it out with the watercolour. So that was the same pink that we started off with. So we're going to have a couple of those on there. So we'll get those sat down. And then on the one in the journal, which I'll show you in a second, I used a full stamp. And it wasn't until I'd done it that I realised that I'd used the same one that we used uh, on the last page. I'll show you what I mean in a second. It's, it's a favourite stamp and I do keep it handy, but I hadn't realised that I'd used it on the last two journal pages. So I've done something a bit different for this one. So Jan, we'll I think we're going to be, I think we're going to be in a shoe in for, for Project of the Week here, you know. <laughs> uh, John is laughing in the studio how early you were saying, yeah, sure, we can leave Craig's in and then you pull this one out. So Amazing. Again, 
just that little bit of uh, extra on there for those butterflies. And what I meant was here, I love this particular one. It's happiness often sneaks in a door that you didn't think was open. Absolutely. I love that. But I didn't realise until I actually uh, looked back that it was the same one wow. that we'd used on this one. So I thought, right, we'll do something different then. Now then, the only thing that I haven't done that I've just realised, and I will have to cover up um, my little bird cage because I don't want that to get it, is some splatters. And I love splattering, oh my goodness. Anything that makes a mess and I'm in there. So let me just move some of these bits out of the way because what I want to do now, you can use your gesso for this or I just happen to have the chalk paint in the white as well. So just to add a bit of highlight, I'm gonna put a bit of the white paint out. I'm gonna dilute it quite a bit with water. Someone was asking, Sarah's question says, Jan, is the shimmer glue then, in essence, a little bit like a kind of Mod Podge-esque uh, product? Very similar. Okay. I think it's their version. I think it's Cosmic Shimmer's version of that particular yeah, product. Yeah, so a seal yeah. and adhesive, basically. Yeah, yeah. so uh, Mod Podge, you can get in lots of different um, finishes. So yes, it's, it's very, very similar to that. So again, I'm just using some of that white and I've covered the birdcage because I don't particularly want the splatters on there. And it just honestly, saying that you don't they're want to get terrible splatters honestly, in, this, uh, in the gallery no one wants to end up with splatters in the bottom of their birdcage <laughs> okie dokes and again what you would make like? sure that was dry before you carry on with your next stage but uh, and then what I've done just to finish this one off is I had a look through my stamps and I've actually got um, I don't know which set it's from. I don't think I brought the set of stamps with me. It's actually Home is oh, Where the Heart Is. Someone in the comments will no yeah, doubt I'm be not able to, uh, sure if it was pinpoint with, that. Um, no, it's gone. <laughs> I was just something came into my head and it's flown out. As was quick it there as it on the tip then. of your tongue? It was, and it just went straight through and out the other side. <laughs> but it is actually a full stamp, literally a, just a block stamp. So what I've done is stamped it out and then just chopped them into pieces. Just before we do that, one last bit that I've just realised I haven't done, and this is a really those of you that have been with us a while will remember the Flutterby collection. This was one of Sarah's earlier signature collections, and you know these two stamps are absolutely used to death for texture you've got that lovely netting and mm. then i've got the um script one which i use all the time so again i'm going to bring my black ink back out and i don't bother with it i don't want a, a a block or anything like that i'm literally just going to use it in my hand just to add some more sort of texture okay. and i'm not bothered whether it's a full stamp or whether it just gets bits of it it's just adding to those layers and adding a bit more interest it's, a br it's amazing so, this again page, i would take a lot more time at home i am going quite quick here just to give you the idea so just to add in those extra bits there and again i keep clearing all the bits up to, in an attempt to try and stay clean and then the last bit then is literally just to pop and I've just run these through my sticky machine just so that it made it a bit quicker so home and then we're going to do is and again if you're worried about getting things straight I like the fact that just you, deliberately put yeah, them at an angle I like the fact that you stamp the sentiment onto a white piece of paper and then put it over the top yep it really makes it stand off the page so doesn't home it? is where the heart is and in this instance the bird cage is the home so we're just going to put the little heart in there Beautiful. so you can see pretty much if I move all the debris from one side this was the one that I'd done as a double page spread at home there you can see you've got um, similar similarities there oh the only thing I have I keep seeing bits that I've not done just to show you the techniques um, going to the again you know all the stuff that you've got in your stash who's got the aqua blend pencils yep. in their stash Loads we've all got them they're all sat those. on the shelf there but it's a water-based product again so where we had those original layers you remember i did that uh, collage work at the beginning with the bits of um, different papers again just to bring out some of that definition i'm just going to go around the edges of some of where those papers are sat and because this is a watercolour pencil, um, there's one there. 
oh, when yeah, you actually awesome, bring man. your water to it now it will actually just define that a little bit so you can just see where it's bringing out that detail and just edges some of those pieces so as i say forgive me because i have rushed like there's no tomorrow well, you it's probably know, one Jan, of the longer demos it. you would but not here, know if i bring you this one back again you can see how i've got this detail here just emphasizing that there is it's drawing your eye that there is something under there but it's not technically part of the design it's in the background and as i say if you look carefully you can just see there's some numbers underneath there's some music underneath and it just adds those points of interest for you but what i wanted to do is actually show you the different techniques so that you've got something that you could refer back to because quite often we bring things pretty much done and we're just going to add some stencil into it or i'm going to add something else to it whereas this was showing you pretty much from the beginning how to arrive at that now if you're doing them on single sheets like this you can stick them into an album into a book or you can punch them and make them into like a, a ring binder so lots of different ways of displaying them if you wanted to keep them as a as a set rather than working in a book I think I've just realized there's a little bit I'd probably add a little bit of the pink into the gaps here where the flowers didn't quite meet as well but yeah, Art Journaling 101, no right or wrong, just do whatever suits you. There's no, oh, well, she did that bit before that bit, whatever you fancy. I actually okay. think that could be something that a lot of people, you know, even maybe non-crafters could have a yep. go at the jam. You know, even, well, non-crafters, people with very limited craft it's experience. Just fun. Like that, looking, watching you do that, it's definitely something I would love to have a go at. Yeah. So I think, you know, just actually there is no go. right or wrong, is there? No, you there just isn't. Gotta get, it's, get... it's what suits you. I just wanted to show you some techniques. You know, you might do that in a completely different way and it looked totally different, but it's just picking up some of those techniques. Mm, absolutely. Uh, Craig is watching along. Here he is. Where is he? He's in his craft room. Gosh, he's barricading, him in, barricading himself into that room, I think. He's not, one day he's not going to get into work. We're going to find him. He's going to be behind a collapsed box somewhere. <laughs> Under uh, one of the desks. Yeah, honestly. absolutely. So, so he's, he's loving gone from here seeing me on TV to going home and watching me on TV. You need yeah. a medal, Craig. <laughs> uh, loads of people still loving that particular demo. Uh, Diana says, Jan has such an artistic eye. It's gorgeous. The pages are beautiful, says Dieta. Uh, Lynn saying how fabulous uh, the page was. Who else is here? Jean says, a mixed media diva jan love her demos jan's techniques are awesome should make a book she's definitely not a diva she's the queen of mixed media i think our oh, jan she's definitely not a diva uh, let me take you back through those six uh, five by nine stencils because that was what was used to create but the thing i think the thing is you, you do need the stencils to get the texture there don't you jan to create the layers layer yeah we talk about all that different layering but the stencils allow you to get like you say that different texture into it and different depths in it yes yeah, so you've got in here the hearts the leaves the circles the rickrack and the stars in there as well uh, so much excitement about how you're going to put these together you can use your coming to buy a discount as well now i can see a lot of you there are quite a few uh mixed media bits in the show i would urge you to get yourself across to crafterscompanion.co.uk.com.eu click the shop the show button have a little look at everything that's in there i can see we've got the gessos on the show uh, we've got some of the cosmic shimmer texture paste as well uh, and the um the pearl the paints as well they're all in the show uh, so go and have a look at them they're going to be awesome for allowing you to do all the kind of things that jan has just showed you i can also see a lot of you with very full baskets waiting for an opportunity to check out so whilst you do that let's share with you uh, some of the awesome goings on here at Crafters TV. And we want to keep you informed. With continued pressure on domestic shipments around mainland US, we've had to temporarily increase the cost of our regular six to 10 working day standard shipping service from $9.99 to $12.95 and our free shipping threshold from $100 to $125. We also have some really great, great news to tell you. We've introduced a brand new shipping service called Express Delivery. This is a fully tracked door-to-door -door service which takes three to seven working days and costs $19.95. This option means you'll get your crafty goodies in your hands sooner, meaning less waiting and more crafting. We're also upgrading delivery services for our gold and platinum Club Inspire members who will now receive priority delivery on all of their orders. And if that wasn't enough, we've upgraded these orders to our new express three to seven day service. Your patience and understanding throughout this very busy time has been amazing. So we'd just like to say a huge thank you and we look forward to chatting to you again very soon. Hi, 
Hi, I'm Sarah from Crafters TV and I'm here to show you how you can get the best deals and shop while you watch during our shows. The best way to watch us is always on Crafters TV. So head over to our homepage and go to Crafters TV home where you can see all of our shows plus exclusive offers and even shop while you watch. Now, if you want to get involved and comment along, you can head on over to our community pages. Come say hello, ask us some questions and chat along live with us. Or you can watch us on YouTube. Simply head to our Crafters Companion YouTube channel. Got a smart TV? You can even airplay our shows direct onto your big screen or stream us live through YouTube. We're constantly adding new and exciting shows to our schedule. So don't forget to check in. It's never been easier to have us in your living room. It's always fun here at Crafters TV, so come join us as we create every day. Welcome to Club Inspire the crafters companion community where you can feed your crafty obsession. Join our fantastic loyalty club today and receive 20% of your first order. We'll also give you 250 points to help get you started. Other benefits of joining Club Inspire include exclusive special offers and discounts for Club Inspire members only, exclusive sneak peek previews of brand new product launches, and of course, the Club Inspire community group on Facebook, where you can access exclusive content such as downloads, offers and inspiration. And of course, you can chat and share your makes with other members. You'll receive one point for every pound, dollar or euro you spend. And the more points you receive, the more benefits you'll unlock. So what are you waiting for? Sign up, join the club and start rewarding yourself today. All the details there of Club Inspire and how to watch the shop at the same time and also uh, all the different shipping options for you too. Uh, still loads of love coming in for that last demonstration of Jans there too. Something else we're now going to have a look at are these. These are my, uh, I know they were a recent launch. They are my favourite of all of the 3D embossing folders that we do. I believe they were a six piece collection. They're now a four piece collection and they are gorgeous. And if you want them, you need to hurry because soon there'll be a three piece collection, then there'll be a two piece and then they'll be gone. So if you want to get them, now's your chance while we've got four of the most popular ones in stock. These were your most popular options. We had deeper stocks of these four, which is why we still got them for you. So what you've got in here is the Grande Butterfly, the Grosse Schmetterling, as I like to call it. Uh, which is this one here. Then you've got the Climbing Ivy, which is just lovely. Love the fact that it's 3D. So you've got foreground detail, mid-ground detail, and background detail in every single one of them, which is fantastic. This here is your Vintage Scroll, which is beautiful. Really super textured. It's like the Palace of Versailles. That's what it reminds me of. I've not been to the Palace of Versailles, but I'd imagine that's what it looks like. Uh, this one here is your lavish leopard print as well there for you. Uh, that 3D leopard print is just beautiful. Uh, you buy three, you get one free, makes them a great deal. You're saving a quarter, which is fantastic with these. Uh, they're quite modern, these ones, aren't they, Jan? They are. And I, it's like, doesn't matter which one you choose, the technique that I'm going to show you, you can do with any of them. But because it's a 3D folder you want that depth of embossing to actually do the technique so I'm going to use the leopard one, print one Joe I know you like this one oh, and that's one favorite. of my favorites as well so what I want to do is you've seen us do the letterpress technique before which is where we put the uh, ink into the folder and it, what it does is it actually pushes the white cardstock up through the inked background. So I'm going to do that today, but I don't want a white background. I want some colour in it. So we're actually going to use some of our uh, pigment inks this time, which I think we've got on the show. Uh, I'm just having honey pot and orange, They're Joe. I think I took them from the collection, yeah. So They're I've taken some stamping card and I've just cut this down to a size that fits inside my folder. So it's just under five by seven inches uh, in size. And first of all, what I want to do is actually ink it up. Now I've just been having a look and I've not brought my right coloured um, 
bits and pieces so I'm going to use what I've got handy so I've got one of the little blending eggs which again we've got in that lovely starter kit and I've just found in the bottom of my bag a little bit of uh, cut and dry foam which will work as well so what I'm actually going to do is go direct to the mat again and I love I talk about this a lot you but I've usually got it see, done it? in advance yeah so again we're going to take that um, mister and because all the inks are water reactive we're literally going to mist this to make it into sort of more of a, a wet uh, medium and I'm just going to take my card and literally dab it in there and I just want to pick up some colour on that background piece so again it doesn't matter where it goes there's no exact science to it just keep going until you're happy with it and then it's you know it's coming again get ready oh get ready for the chuckles hi yep. welcome to the drive through how can i help you please <laughs> again i just want to dry that layer because well, it, then um four star unleaded sir <laughs> that's that's me as a kid you can just um work over the top of it then you know trying to concentrate with these guys around is hilarious do you remember we used to have four star fuel do you remember that was it called was it like you you either had unleaded petrol or four star do you yes. remember that and i can remember collecting stamps as well collecting stamps, do you remember yeah. collecting stamps with your fuel my yeah you could uncle buy all had a, sorts my uncle you had a car which was four star and in the end the car got so old that there was only like two garages in a 30 mile radius that still sold it <laughs> and you'd end up then having to like mix it so you'd have to put unleaded and then a bit of this solution into it oh, as well to no. make the car go so then I'm going to do exactly the same with the orange as the base. What, so were, again, the, what were the collecting stars, Jan? Uh, again, you, you collect it. So without how much you, you got so many per how much you'd spent. And then you collected them in a little book and you could spend them as money. So there'd be certain things. It was like, you know, when you go to the arcades and you get all the tickets and you can yeah. go and cash them in for prizes. It was a bit like that. There was actually stuff that you could go and cash the, the stamps in for. Just wow. random things, you know, like a pair of gardening gloves or Johnny got a TV apparently. Wow. Yeah. How amazing. So I'm going to do the same with the orange and I'm sort of loosely aiming for where the gaps are now, but it's not an exact science. Kind so. of like a kind of like a fuel base fuel blah, 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 a fuel based club card then. Yeah, sort, like that of. sort of thing, like a loyalty scheme. Yeah. Oh I love it. So again where you've got that sort of gaps and movement, when you're happy with it, the key is to get it dry or as dry as you can. Because once it's dry you can work over the top. So again, we're going to pop. Them in here? He said it was all about his dad's four caprice to burn through the fuel like no one's business. That's why he was able to get all the stars. Oh. On the way back from Blackpool one year, the exhaust fell off. We, I can, but one better than that. My, uh, my husband used to have capris when he was younger. They were the, sort of the in thing then. And I once remember him and my stepdad being out in one of the capris and it actually caught fire. Oh no. And they both leapt out of the car and started running up the road. It was on the dashboard. I think it was like an electrical spark or something like that. They're like, not going to care in the world for the car. They just literally both got out and legged it up the road and left it. I don't know what happened. Oh gosh, so, I've got a story a bit similar to that. But basically, when I was uh, going out, my family I have go. and still had like food businesses, they're like food trucks, you see at music yeah. festivals and stuff. So when I was about 20, I was driving one of these said food trucks. I, so I had a van. I know, imagine me, a van with a big trailer hooked oh, up I behind see. it, driving along. Yeah. I got to this hill, John, started coming down this hill. And all of a sudden, <laughs> I looked out the right-hand side, and one of the wheels from the food truck overtook oh, me. Oh, no! It, it came past me. I was like, what on earth? And it was sort of down a big dip to a roundabout. And lucky nothing was coming, because it sort of... This tyre hit the roundabout, flew right up in the air oh my and landed days. flat in the roundabout. <laughs> right, so we're going to actually put on that note, <laughs> we're going to use this background now to do that letterpress technique. So again, I'm just checking that I've got a raised side in my folder and a recess. So I want the ink on the recess side so that when I put my card in here, it's going to push the detail up through the card and catch it in that recess side. So any paint on here is going to be transferred to the card stock. So I've actually remembered my brayer today. You can go direct to the ink, to the uh, embossing folder, but the pigment inks are on a foam ink pad and it's very easy to over ink. Okay. The react water reactive ones are on a foam, uh, on a felt pad which is a lot harder but I do prefer to use my brayer for this because you've got a direct flat surface to flat surface when you go over here so literally just load up 
the brayer brayer with the ink and this is actually seal brown that I've picked now. Now I don't think this one's in the collection, Joe. So forgive me for that, but I wanted the brown over no the worries. top because I'm trying to get that sort of animal print look going on. I'm not sure if this is a compliment, but Laura says, Joe, you sound like the voice announcing department floors on the elevator of Grace Brothers on Are You Being Served? Oh, I used to love that programme. First go... floor, ladies' lingerie. <laughs> No, it's uh, Mrs. Slocum's my favourite. Oh. I, I, won't, I won't do any of the impressions because I will get myself in trouble. Right, so once we've got the ink in there, we're then going to pop this one in the other side. Get it in place, close your folder, and then the trick is not to move anything. Okay. So then 3D folder, I'm going to take a clear plate... I'm going to take a magnetic shim with my folder in and then I'm going to use the plastic shim as the top layer. Because the folder's thicker, the sandwich needs to be slightly less. So those of you that are using the Gemini will be familiar with this now. And we're going to pop that through there and what's happening is it's embossing and at the same time it's pushing that ink into the background of uh, the design. So when we take this out of here, you can see now that we've got that lovely sort of ink in the background there, but you've got that, it almost looks like pebbles now, I think. It's nice. So you've got that detail in the background. And then as far as this is concerned, again, this is the beauty of those water-based products. Literally, it doesn't damage your folder. The ink is water-based. You may get a little bit of staining, but that doesn't worry me. It just tells me that a product's well loved. So it all cleans up, ready for the next one. And that one's good to go. Brilliant. So what we've got here then, I'm just going to go round the edge. What paper, or card, what card stock are you using here, Dan? This was stamping card, okay. which I've rechristened all purpose card. All purpose card, Because yeah. we do all sorts with it. It would work just the same on watercolour card as well, but you want something that's quite robust. Uh, because we've done so much to it. So literally, I'm just going to take my little egg and just round the outside there, I just want to add a bit more definition round that edge. And I was watching Sara yesterday and I was mesmerised with when she was doing this round the edge of the papers on that yes. garden party collection. And it just looked, they looked like different pieces of they paper. Do. They really did. Whoops. So pop that one to one side, constantly clearing up the mess in an attempt to try and stay clean. Well, I think you've managed it, And Jan. then the last thing, which again, I know you've all got in your stash, we've all got these in our stash. This is my favourite one and it's back in stock. It's been out of stock for such a long time. This is the King Gold one. You can see there's quite a lot of this one gone. So again, just going to take a little bit of that. They're not and in the show category, they are across on the website. If you search them for gilding waxes, you'll find them there. So again, I'm just, I'm rushing again. I've been a little bit heavy handed with it, but uh, just to go. And I'm trying to catch that other level of embossing now. So we've got the colour in the background. We've got the letterpress has actually taken the brown into the background and then just by adding the gilding wax it's catching these elements that are raised in the center Fabulous. so i was a bit heavy-handed i got a bit giddy there at the beginning so again we'll keep the tidy up process going pop that back and then with your gilding wax once i mean it doesn't take long to dry but you can actually just buff it so nice. it just it brings up the the shimmer on it it doesn't rub it off not on my, a little bit on the cloth, but that's mm. just the surplus where I've been a bit heavy handed. And you get to this point. So this is where I started. So you can just see there, how it's picking up that shimmer with the gilding wax, just as an added layer, just to add all those details. And somebody would look at that and think, how on earth have they, got, have they done that? You know, it started out just as plain white paper. And as I say, I've said it all the way through the show. I love starting out with something that's just plain paper and finishing with something like that. Now then, what I've actually done to this one now is I've taken it to my um, rectangular dies and I've cut an aperture in here. Now, we always say to you, cut first and emboss second. Right. Because if you emboss and then cut, it's going to flatten the embossing, that okay. makes sense. Mm. But what I did here was just take out one of my shims. 
So because it was just an aperture die, it doesn't need a lot of pressure. It's not like cutting an intricate die that's got lots of cutting edges. You've literally got four sides. So all I did was take out my uh, magnetic shim and put this through the machine with the two clear plates and the plastic shim. And it was enough pressure to cut this out without damaging the embossing too much. And then I've backed it on a piece of um, brown cardstock. And I think we've got a couple of paper pads on the show as well, Joe. This was from that... Um, is it all occasions yes. the brights one it's a double-sided cardstock it's lovely and again a really good weight so again i've used the die that i used to cut my aperture and the next die up just to make a little gold frame on there that's going to be the main part of my card so let's just pop that down with my tape pen see i've run out of uh, i've not got tape on this one i must have been in a rush when i was doing this one uh, you get both the bright and the all occasions. Details are on the bottom of your screen. 144 sheets of the 6x6, 8x8, Johnny, uh, for that great price of £26 or $33, which is amazing. It's like, what, 17 pence a sheet, something along those lines? Really good value. Covered in gilding wax now. Look, I've got it everywhere. Well, Didn't you I... could be... I mean, it's, there's worse things to be covered in. I don't think I've got anything on me yet, though, no. without my apron. Amazing. And then the bit that I cut out of the centre, I've gone down again to the next... It's a set of nesting rectangles. So I've gone down another one and cut a piece out of the waist that was cut out of the centre here. And I've just mounted that on a piece of... Uh, massive piece of foam there. This is the beauty of having those foam sheets. You can cut it to whatever size you want. My new love in life. And that one's going to go in the centre to leave that little brown edge round it. And then all I've done is just choose a sentiment from the many that are in the stash. And I've put foam pad on one side because it's going to be deeper on this side. And then I've put a little bit of tape on this side because that's going to sit on the raised part and the foam pad then is going to actually bring it up to the level of the rest of it nice so again just to give you something quite abstract but just using those embossing folders in a slightly different way i love way the, almost the tile that you've done in the mm. frames great we need to do a quick vote then i, I mean i think it's a foregone conclusion so we'll just do a quick vote so Box was the first one, wasn't it, Jan? Yep, we did. started off with those lovely 12 by 12 stencils. So you had the box. So that was which the is box, brilliant. number so one. You can vote box. Number two was the abstract stamp. So we did that watercolour background and then the abstract. butterfly stamp. That's number two. So number, number one, number two. Number three was the journaling page, and the that winner. was using those stencils. Number three. Uh, and or... then number four, we've just used the 3D embossing folders and the inks to make that one. Brilliant. Just uh, with that get abstract. voting. You haven't got long. You've got two minutes to vote. Who's on? The, who's a social media superstar? I'm gonna have to apologise for the. Uh, oh, me, me, um, me. iPad's having a brain fart. Uh, I'll come back to that in a second. <laughs> uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a little look at what's coming up uh, here for the rest of today and also into tomorrow uh, here on Crafters TV. Here we have got oh, the launch party tonight. You're going to have an Explorers deal and out of this world deal. You guys have loved the apron and the food mixer. They're back in stock. A fifth of the stock went just in our earlier wake up calls. So do be quick for those. And then tomorrow uh, we will, of course, have wake up call. Random Crafts of Kindness is the order of the day tomorrow. Make sure you get those into us. Uh, myself and Craig here, midday in the UK, 7 a.m. if you're on the East Coast, 4 a.m. across on the West Coast as well. Uh, and then there's also a launch day to... The Get It Got It Good, brilliant. Uh, the Get It Got It Good this week, of course, uh, is the Gemini Junior full plate collection. I uh, hear, as you can see, two cutting plates, magnetic shim, plastic shim, purple shim, uh, and you've got the carry case as well. £35 or $36, you'll save £7 or $7.20 as a Club Inspire Platinum member. There you are. Uh, <laughs> launch day is what I was saying tomorrow. Yes, you can use your uh, Gemini Junior for your launch day, that's where I was going with that. Uh, and uh, also, of course, is then there'll be Creative Cravings as well tomorrow night, which is amazing. It's SJ as well, the lovely Sarah Jane is doing in our social media superstar. I want to go back to the large stencils. You guys love these large stencils. Easy to see why. So I think because we launched them with a Gemini Pro, you think you need a Pro in order to use them. You do. I mean, I guess if you want to use them as a... Um, as, a as an emboss, then you will. But I mean, the primary function of a stencil is to stencil, isn't it, Jan? Yep. 
Uh, Honestly, so you... it's, it's like you can just use any part of it. I mean, those those that have got an open space, like the hearts, they look great if you use your fine liner pen and actually draw. You know, like you used to stencil when you were younger and you used to draw inside the stencils. And then you can add all sorts of different colours to them. Uh, nice that some of them are, I think, for a lot of people make the starting stenciling, I, I'm sure you'll agree, Jan, it's easier to stencil with something yeah. that has more stencil than space to begin with, would you yes. say? So yes, So nice that does. some of these have got a lot of stencil and not a lot of space, like the circles, but then you can build yourself up. So like the Chesterfield level one, yep. that one may be a little bit more challenging to use, but you know you're going to be able to do that. And if you do want to work on a smaller area, you can just mask yeah. out part of the stencil. So if you wanted to do like a six by six square, just mask it out so that you just work working with that element from it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I've really enjoyed this show, Jan. It's been awesome. Good. Uh, the winner with 90% of the vote is number three. 90% <laughs> of all the votes. Honestly, it's like the opposite of the UK at Eurovision. Uh, that's what's happened. Good luck. Uh, and, and I know that uh, Jan was like, yeah, sure, let Craig put his in. I mean, oh, I think it's a foregone conclusion. If you're still watching, Craig, then soz about it. Uh, it has been an absolutely fantastic show. <laughs> Massive thanks to Jan. Uh, as I said earlier, there's absolutely loads coming up for you uh, for the rest of today and of course into tomorrow as well. Don't forget as well, if you want to grab anything from this show, you can do so really easy. Get yourself over to the website, crafterscompanion.co.uk.com.eu. Click that Shop the Show button uh, and there you'll see all the products. Remember as well, if you are a Platinum member and you're spending over £15 or Euros today, you will get a free gift, but only while the free gift lasts. I don't know actually, I don't actually know how many of them there are uh, it just whilst it's there it'll automatically be added at checkout uh, whilst we still have it in stock so take advantage of it uh, if you haven't already done so yet today remember as well i know there's been a lot of new techniques in the show you'll be able to watch the show back at any point you like in the future over on our website too so make sure you go do that huge thanks to jan big thanks to johnny and charlotte uh, and of course the biggest thanks as always to you guys at home this is your two hour warning we're gonna have a gossip and a cuppa and we'll see you back here then take care <laughs>